Good evening. We're going to treat this like church right now. Y'all don't settle down. Good evening. First of all, can we give a round of applause to Chairwoman People's Stokes for her leadership? Come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Thank you for your introduction and for your time. I definitely will be bringing you on the road with me next time, if that's all right. I am sure everyone's excited to have to dress up twice on a Sunday, don't worry. We won't be passing out a plate and collecting any offerings tonight. If you do catch the spirit, I'm gonna ask that you don't mess up the sister's shoes to your left. Don't mess up the brother's tux to your right. He rented it probably, so just look out for him right now. To all the leadership here on this evening, all the members of the caucus, Speaker Silver, Leader Stuart Cousins, Leader Klein, to all the members of the New York State Senate and Assembly, to our esteemed governor, Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand, to all elected officials here, and honestly to all of you for looking just so, so good tonight. I say good evening. If you don't mind, I ask for a moment of personal liberty to acknowledge the three members of my family who are here tonight. First, other than my father, the man who did more to shape me into the man that I am today, is my oldest brother, Donovan Antonio Hay, who has served this country for 27 years in the U.S. Army, including being stationed at Fort Drum in Watertown, New York from 1993. Led a deployment in Desert Storm and is now back here in the States. So I ask that you show a lot of love and thank him for his service to Sergeant First Class Donovan Antonio Hayes, who's here tonight. Second, although sometimes he can drive me crazy, I still love him because he is my nephew and he's the one that's here right now with the iPad, so just leave him alone if that's okay. But the next generation of our family and just the blessing every day. And the reason why I work so hard is to make sure that he sees other brothers doing the right thing. Amen, amen. And to my nephew Dwight Hay. Last but certainly not least, because since I'm a Christmas baby, we have any Capricorns in the room? Any Capricorn? All right, all folks got real hype back there, okay. Because I wanna make sure that I get a birthday gift and a Christmas gift. I can't get all at the same time, right? Allow me to show love to the Lily of my valley, my bright and morning star. A woman who just retired after working 40 years at a manufacturing plant in Inglewood, New Jersey. To my mom, Hillary Lawrence, who's here tonight. Looking all good right there. Don't, don't hurt him. We come together tonight feeling inspired by what has happened this weekend. It's a weekend when we celebrate love. It's a weekend we celebrate the honor of our president for its President's Day on tomorrow. And obviously that takes more meaning for us now that we have our first African-American president in the White House. It's a moment when we celebrate the greatness of those that have come before us and the exceptional new leaders in Rochester and Buffalo and in New York City, the first ever citywide elected of a woman of color, and Tish James, our first Latina serving as Speaker of City Council, Melissa Mark Beverito. We have a lot to be proud of, do we not? So we come here tonight on this theme of reclaiming our sons and daughters, and I come here as someone that you reclaim, because you never gave up on me. Now I'm here in large part because of the service of working for President Obama and if you allow me just a brief moment of personal privilege, he is not Barack, he is not Obama, he's not your boy, he's Mr. President.
But I come here tonight because my journey here hopefully shows the other young brothers and sisters that they can make it. My mom is from Alexandria, Jamaica. All right, we got some yard folk in the room, all right now. Came from humble beginnings, walked to school, sold food at the market in Brownstown. Once slept on church pews, but wouldn't let the physical environment be the barrier to her greatness and potential. My daddy's from Papine, Jamaica. A police officer, sir, who drove the security vehicle. It makes a lot of sense to me now why he was so good at driving the church van. They came together on Christmas Day of 82. Out came a little Christmas gift in me. In the very beginning, it wasn't easy, though. I was born with a heart murmur. 18 days, I stayed at the ICU. Family was so afraid that I wouldn't make it. My daddy bought a portrait of the Last Supper, hoping that God would bless us for me to come on home. And when I came on home, like so many of us, it was not easy, and it won't be easy. We've all seen the problems of when someone has a challenge of going to a good school, when you watch both your parents go through cancer, when you see relatives getting locked up and trying to turn their lives around. Dreams are shattered too often, but for those of us that stand here tonight, you persevere. You decide that that won't be my testimony, that won't be my walk. I have a testimony that I must share that I refuse to allow my circumstance to hold me back right now. And I'm fortunate to be here. See, my last day of my freshman year at Northwestern, driving back from Northwestern back to New York, I fell asleep at the wheel. And the only reason that I didn't pass away on that day is the amount of luggage that was in the car that weighed us on down and purely because of God's grace. So we come here tonight real clear about why we do this work. We have to reclaim our sons and daughters because not anything is promised. Every day we wake up is another day to serve. Every day that we wake up is another day to do something more. Every day that we wake up is another day to help a child who needs you right now. So when the skinny guy from Hawaii slash Chicago gave a skinny kid from the Bronx a chance to serve, it gave me a chance to say, you know what? Yes, I'm from the Bronx, and I love that we throw up the boogie dance. But don't talk about the Bronx like we're some sort of negative person. No, no, we are people of greatness, the home of hip-hop, the home of the Yankees, and the home of amazing things that come along. We'll come back to that later on. I know we got some Brooklyn folks in here. I don't want to, I don't want to call the Rockets in here, you know? I know, I know, I know, I know. It's not Labor Day right now. You gotta, I know, we gotta let it go. We just got the West Indian Parade right now, Congressman. All right, got a lot of love in here. But I say that everyone spare me of the excuses, young person, because you can make it. My service is not political, it's personal. See, I see in my life when I see in these young brothers and sisters, you can make it if you try. But everybody, we come here at a crossroads in our community, do we not? What shall become of the young men and women of color who seem more lost than lifted, more distracted than destined, more endangered than excited? I envision a day where our communities are not seeking to be reclaimed anymore, but rather our excellence is begged to be repeated. In New York State, let them see us as the ones where I don't just get a check, but we focus on network. Let us be the ones that it's about an opportunity and success to be realized. It's clear when we see our sons and daughters, where do we have to go? Well, I'm sick and tired of how people talk about us like we can't achieve more. If you look at your smartphone after the speech or any time when you go down home, the first few links about young men and women of color are not about our educational excellence. It's not about our greatness. It's about HIV and AIDS and negative statistics and correctional supervision. But we know we're better than that. We know we're stronger than that. So whether you come from the Bronx or Buffalo, Astoria or Albany, we have to go about reclaiming our sons and daughters. Far too many are being lost. Far too many are merely expendable casualties in what is viewed by some as progress. But reclaim. What does it mean? It, it means I have to get back something that was taken away. And for too often, our children have seemed to be taken away from us. 
Now, the theme does not imply, should we reclaim them? Doesn't ask the question, will we reclaim them? Could we? More so, it's implying, how do we reclaim them? Well, I'm convinced that we have to get them to reclaim themselves first, while we come together to help them be reclaimed. So brothers and sisters, allow me a few moments to speak on the subject. I am not my situation. I am, we are. It signifies that I might have been in a tough circumstance where things were really hard and unfortunate, but it does not mean that I can't make it. According to the Shop Foundation, black and Hispanic males had the worst high school graduation rate of any state in the country. In 2010 in New York City, only 9% of black males and 11% of Latino males were college ready in 2010. So don't tell me there's not a clear urgency to act right now. It's compounded when you think about how so many of our brothers and sisters are also trying to find a job. And a job with dignity, a job that gives them hope to feel stronger about themselves. But you know what happens? When there's a lost job and lost degrees, it leads to more lost hope. Lost hope is far too big a despair to allow to breathe. Far too big a despair to be ignored. Now we think about the income gap that's happening, widening and widening every single day. We have to ask ourselves and say, and stand up with Mayor de Blasio, and stand up with our speaker and say, this income inequality cannot continue because no one should have a job and still be poor. And we're all seeing it firsthand, are we not? In the South Bronx, there was a shooting that happened on 161st Street at McKinley Houses. Young man shot five times by an anonymous shooter, had a gun on his own possession as well. And unfortunately, the violence is not an anomaly, but almost expected. Far too many of our sisters and brothers expect for this to become the norm. But we have to continue to change this fight for this, do something more in our respective communities. Need another wake-up call? The Bureau of Justice Statistics said that one in three black men can expect to go to prison in their lifetime. Sadly, it's not just our men. The number of women incarcerated has increased 800% in the last three decades. So when you think about our neighborhoods and why we have to be reclaimed, it's because we have to bring hope back to their lives. Hope back to the communities, hope back to their homes. In my family's home, I've seen it firsthand how pain and crime can try to break you down, but when you focus on the promise and focus on hope, something can be more possible to achieve. Hope breeds optimism, and we know hope triumphs over despair. Now, by the way, this is not just a urban conversation. For the child or the parent and the caregiver in the urban community, suburban community, and the rural community should be caring about our sons and daughters too. It's the soccer mom in the suburbs, the dad who lives upstate from the bustling lights of New York City or Buffalo, the one who may not see a black, Latino, or Asian child should still be fighting for them as well. You might not have walked in my shoes, but you can understand the journey that I'm on. So walk with me. And don't be frightened by these statistics, but be energized mobilized and determined, refusing to lose our generation any longer. In the same spirit that Ruben Diaz and so many other borough presidents have conveyed, we are committed to reclaiming our greatness and saying emphatically, despite your neighborhood, despite your block, despite your school, despite your economic circumstance, that son and daughter, you are phenomenal, you are capable, you are achieving more greatness than you can ever achieve, and I am not my situation. I am The caucus is not here for pageantry and just conferences, no. We're here about the work of the people. We're here to make sure that no longer do our communities feel left behind. How do we stand up and say no longer will corruption and personal greed be present, but more so justice and equality? Now there's many amazing examples of how we fight for these things. And we focus on jobs, education, and stronger communities to make our children believe they can be achieved. My daddy, God rest his soul, worked for much of his life at St. Barnabas Hospital as a proud member of SCIU 1199. 
I remember a summer job that I had. I had my short sleeves, and I was trying to figure out what to do and walk around the hospital and how to help somebody right now. But you know what happened? By seeing another brother that looked like me, it made me think that a job can provide dignity and hope and responsibility. It made me think that I just want, didn't want to just walk around with sagging pants. I actually wanted to do something with myself. It showed me that optimism that I could believe in with all of my heart, with all that we pulled together. I think about my mama, who worked for 40 years at a manufacturing plant. And often, like so many folks, had to focus on having multiple jobs to make ends meet. Some days we would go down to the warehouse on Jerome Avenue, and I thought we were just getting food because Mama loves to cook. And Mama, you are an amazing cook. Let's be clear about that right now. But it was about getting food so that we could sell food to pay our rent and pay the bills. And I watched Daddy and I watched Mama and I thought and experienced, I can have dignity from this job. It will instill within me all that I can do to motivate someone else to achieve more greatness. Many in this room walk the halls of the Capitol and LOB and understand that we have to reclaim our sons and daughters. From assemblyman Heasty's advocacy for minimum wage to be tied in line with region, regional living costs, to the comptroller, Denapoli, and Stringer saying that MWBs have to be a part of the table. That's why we fight for it right now, to give us a chance for equality and a seat at the table to reclaim our sons and daughters in every way. From Governor Cuomo's leadership, when we took over, when he took over, of just less than 10% of MWBs getting contracts, and now more than 20%. For the Tappan ZZ pro project, where we say, I have to make sure hundreds of millions of dollars get into our communities. Look upstate. It's not about brown fields and abandoned buildings. No, now it's about biotech and agriculture. And we focus on what we need to achieve. A job can help that young brother and sister realize I can be great once more. And to say very clearly, I am not my situation, I am, we are. Now in education, let's be clear, our kids need to go from the cradle to the career. Great nonprofits like Save Our Streets in the South Bronx, Brother Hakeem says it well. If I can help that young brother or sister go to school and graduate from school and then get a job, they're probably not joining again. If you pick up a book and you pick up a check, you probably don't pick up a gun. Now, if we declare, that I am not my situation, I am, we are. We have to say that, no, we're not gonna let these schools shutter at 3 p.m. We gotta say this has to be a space for our children to be safe and secure and have everything that they need. It should be a community center, a center of hope, a center that shows us what's possible. Chairwoman People Stokes, you excel by showing everyone, when you invest in the kids, what can be possible for them. The caucus as a whole, through search for education, elevation, and knowledge, demonstrates very clearly that if I allow my children to have the resources, they can achieve great things. From the DREAM Act to universal pre-K, all of these things are part of the journey to fight for our kids to have a chance and say, I am not my situation. I am, we are. The school and community I grew up in in the Bronx, PS79, Savage Inequalities of Public Education. That's not how you want to be described, but you still fight through that. And the community stayed with me and claimed me and reclaimed me and said very clearly, we're not going to let you fall, young brother. Not going to let you fail, because we believe in you. And if we do the same thing for our young brothers and sisters here tonight, imagine the potential that could be realized. Keeping our sons and daughters understanding that it's about stronger communities. Focusing on ending this gun violence that's happening on too many of our blocks every single day. Upstate and downstate, similar types of problems. And because of the collective efforts, we passed the New York State Act, the toughest gun law in the nation. But allow me to be clear, think about what doesn't happen when legislators don't act. Look at Florida, for example. Stand your ground that's there because legislators didn't stand up when they needed to. 
So now is an opportunity when we think about Trayvon and Jordan Davis and all those that come thereafter. How do we stand up for that child who can't stand up anymore? Why do we stand? Well, it's because it's a new era. I know stop and frisk may not be here, but there's still trouble in our communities and our sons and daughters need us. It's now about shopping frisk, walking frisk, stand on your block, do absolutely nothing and still get frisk. And still we have to find a way to stand up for our young people and give them a chance. Show them that civil injustice will be the anomaly and no longer the norm. The work of Erica Ford, of Tamika Mallory, of Michael Skolnick shows us that I have to be a voice for the voiceless and say we value your life, young brother, young sister. You're not gonna sit there quietly any longer. And if something happens to you, we're gonna make sure raise the age happens. Why? Because a child shouldn't lose their future because they're 16 or 17 and get sentenced by an adult record. So why are we here tonight? We're here to say very clearly to the sons and daughters, you are amazing. Ruth Hassel Thompson, you have been a phenomenal state senator by saying the gathering to say to our daughters that you are beautiful, intelligent, strong, capable, and amazing. Assemblyman Kamara does the same. I am the change. We're, we're showing communities you should expect more. When Assemblyman Wright pushes for rent regulations, or Assemblyman Kim says tax relief for homeowners is giving us a chance to do more for our sons and daughters, because when we give them a chance to succeed, they can do amazing things. But that's why we're here. Here to do something different. Just like in 1966 on the Midnight Walk, something different had to happen. Because the conventional way of doing things was not working in our communities. I don't care what it is. Stand up for your sons and daughters and do what's right. Women's rights, civil rights, gay rights, labor rights, civil rights, student rights, tenant rights. Don't overthink it, stand up and do what's right. It's not about a winning an election, it's about enacting change and fighting for our communities who need us right now. Why do you gotta stand up for change? Because somebody's grandmama had to decide, you know what, I'm gonna walk a few miles today so you just can drive a few minutes tomorrow. Somebody's granddaddy had to decide, I'm gonna pick some cotton today so the only thing you gotta pick up is the remote control on your big screen TV. are being lost ever again. Now is our time to say that is who we are. We are dream realizers, hope providers, inspiration igniters. That is who we are. All races, straight, gay, female, and male, standing united as one. That is who we are. From the Bronx to Buffalo, Brooklyn to Binghamton, Astoria to Albany, Westchester to Walsh, go to town. Staten Island to Syracuse, Manhattan to Middlebury, we are the Empire State, the greatest state of them all. That is who we are. Even when the towers fall, we won't allow that to control our destiny, yet we rise like a phoenix from the ashes. We are convinced. This won't be our destination, no, this is just a stop and route to our destiny. Dreamers and farmers, apartment dwellers, homeowners, graduates and second chances, no matter what your situation is, say I am not my situation, I am, we are. Be empowered, be reclaimed, and understand that we won't be the generation that loses another generation. Rather, let's lead a new generation. Envision a day where it's not about sagging pants and lost hope, but about regaining confidence and soaring test scores. A moment where there's peace in our neighborhoods and calm around the midnight. A time when achievements of black people and Latino people and Asian people are not seen as historic but commonplace. A livelihood where a union worker doesn't wait seamlessly, seemingly forever for a well-deserved pay raise. Where a teacher doesn't wait for school supplies. Where a child doesn't wait for love in their home and the communities are not waiting for the authorities because another act of violence took another child away. But rather, this is the moment where pride rises to the heavens because of the excellence achieved by our children, 
The hearts are full in this environment, in this room, where we have pride and dignity around our table and crystallize those dreams. Where diamonds in the rough are known and seen as our children today. One diamond in the rough is a young boy named Jacob Philadelphia. You see at the White House, photos usually come down every seven to 10 days. But there's one photo that the president himself says will not come down. It happened in 2009, when Carlton, Philadelphia, brought his family back for a departure photo. After the photo was complete, he said, both of my sons have a question to ask you. Isaac, now 12, asked the president, why did you eliminate the F-22 fighter jet? which the president was obviously a little surprised that a young kid was asking about a F-22, but he said, because it costs too much. But it was Jacob Philadelphia. Jacob's story, which is what shows us what's still possible in our communities. See, Jacob was only five years old at the time. And Jacob said, Mr. President, I just got a new suit. Mr. President, I um I just I just got a haircut. But Mr. President, I was wondering if I could um I was wondering if I could touch your hair and hope it feels like mine. And he said,